What's going on? Welcome to View the Right Thing. And JJ Reddick has transitioned from NBA star to ESPN's newest rising star pretty seamlessly. But Jerry West is ready to rip those scenes off as he's just entered into the fray that Reddick calls when he popped off on first take. And if JJ Reddick beefing with old school legends was not on your bingo card, that's cool. I'm going to catch you up because this one is starting to get interesting. Okay, so back in April, J.J. Reddick, Stephen A. Smith, and Mad Dog Russo are doing that thing where they're pretending to debate, and today, they're pretending to debate Chris Paul's legacy. And Mad Dog's like, CP3's aight, but he's no Bob Cousy, and that set J.J. off. Bob Cousy, Cousy won championships game. when there were eight teams in the Guys. NBA, and you had to win two playoff series. And he's not done. He even goes on to take a swipe at the whole era, Tupac style. Oh, well, you know, he was being guarded hey, hey, hey. by plumbers and firemen. Well, Reddick must have forgotten that Kuzi was still alive or something because at 93 years old, the Hall of Famer had time for all of this. Bob calls into Sirius and chooses war. He says that he won't defend himself, but... but I will defend the firemen and the plumbers. How about Bill Russell, uh, Wilt Chamberlain, a guy named Elgin Baylor, Oscar Robinson, Jerry West wasn't too shabby. And then he lands the kill shot. And we must have had the best firemen and plummets on the planet at the time. <laughs> After that, things died down. That is, until Jerry West figured that he was done with the Winning Time producers and wanted smoke with J.J. Reddick, too. He goes on to Sirius as well, which must be at this point the go-to sniper platform for all old-school NBA legends. Anyway, he starts off by saying that in a conversation about greats, why is J.J. Reddick even involved in the first place? Tell me what his career looked like. What did he do that was that determined games. And he wasn't done there. He averaged, what, he averaged 12 points a game in the league? Um, somewhere along the way, numbers count. And finally, he goes on to explain why he even decided to punch down anyway. AJ should be very thankful that he's made as much money as he's made. Um, I just think it's very disrespectful. Mike. And to be real, I tend to agree. I think there's a fallacy that newer NBA stars are overwhelmingly more athletic or talented than generations that came before them. Are athletes today bigger, stronger, and faster? Yeah. But time and again, we've seen that if you put new school athletes onto old school equipment, their results are similar to the vets, which means that the real difference between eras lies in the quality of the technology more than the quality of the athletes. And if you dig TED Talks, I'll leave a dope one on the topic in the description for you. But even if you were to see that point to Reddick, JJ's other point, one that you actually hear a lot these days, is also wrong on its face. He maintains that because Kuzi couldn't or wasn't asked to shoot, that he couldn't make it in the modern playoffs. But in the 21-22 season, basically every round had a guy out there contributing who couldn't shoot. And in the finals, there was one of those guys on both sides of the ball. And beyond tech, you could tick off perks like private planes and specialized medical staffs basically forever. You could, but why would you? The reality is that every era is defined by many factors that are outside of a player's control. The one thing that is, is their performance versus their peers. Elite is elite. And what Jerry West and Bob Cousy are taking issue to is JJ judging guys who were elite in their era when he wasn't in his. And JJ better hope that his era isn't held to that same exact standard. Otherwise, the stars of tomorrow will say that they were trash because they played with podcasters and TV show hosts. Thanks for watching View the Right Thing. If you dig the vibe, hit the subscribe to join the tribe. Peace.